How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, March 17th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review yesterday's Elite matchups and performances from Wednesday, March 16th. And of course, I'm going to preview everything that's going on today. But before I do that, um, just to take a quick step back and look at where we are for um, St. Patrick's Day 2022. I got it wrong a couple days ago. I do apologize, but I, I do have it right now. I do now know that St. Patrick's Day is March 17th. Um, we are now getting ready to see the round of 64 starting off in the men's bracket for March Madness as the first four matchups are officially concluded um, as there were 68 teams that came in and four teams have officially been eliminated. On the women's side, the first two of the first four matchups have been played as there are now 66 of the 68 original teams that are still remaining that are competing for the 2022 title. This is going to be quite a March that we're looking that, that that we are in for taking a look at what's going on in the NBA the NBA teams are in the, about the final month of the season only one team has made the playoffs and two teams have been eliminated from playoff contention as there is about we're, we're going to see how everything plays out and then with it with what's going on with soccer because we are now officially in March there's about a month and a half left in the European seasons and in the international tournaments such as Champions League teams are now officially through the round of 16 and they are now officially in the quarterfinal round uh, not to mention that today teams are going to be playing their second league of Europa League's round of 16 so Europa League is not far behind with that said starting off with college basketball's um, men's bracket looking at the final two or looking at the first um, round of 16 matchup in the south region the Wright State Raiders the champions from the Horizon League would end up facing off against the 16 seed Brian Bulldogs, who ended up winning the Northeast Conference. Wright State would end up beating Bryant 93-82. to They won this game by 11 after they outscored the Bulldogs by 9 in the second half. On the losing end of this matchup, the 16th ranked Bryant Bulldogs were led in scoring by their starting guard, Peter Kiss. Um, their senior out of New York City would go on to finish with 28 points, as well as 3 steals in 39 minutes. He would go on to shoot 11 11 for 25 from the field and he would go on to shoot four for six in his final game um, on the winning end of this matchup the 16th ranked Wright State Raiders were led in scoring by their starting guard Tanner Holden um, their starting junior out of Ohio will go on to finish with 37 points and 11 rebounds as well as two steals in 39 minutes he shot 11 for 15 from the field he made his only three-pointer and he shot 14 for 16 from the foul line um, their starting guard Trey Calvin their junior out of Glendale Heights Illinois will go on to finish with 21 points five rebounds and two steals in 33 minutes he shot seven for 14 from the field and he shot five for six from the foul line with this win the 16 seed Wright State Raiders will advance to the round of 64 in the south region of the uh, March Madness bracket their next opponent will be the Pac-12 champions for 2022 Arizona um, as right now with this win they are now 22 and 13 their season still goes on with this loss the 16 seed Brian Bulldogs and the Northeast Conference champions for the 2021-22 season will finish their season with a 22 and 10 record um, as this will be like I said the end of their uh, season this is how it ends for them this coming after they finish with the best record and won the Northeast Conference Tournament. Um, taking a look at the 11 seed matchup in the West region, the 11 seed uh, Notre Dame Fighting Irish would end up beating the 11 seed Rutgers Scarlet Knights uh, in this particular matchup. Notre Dame would end up winning by two in double overtime. Uh, and with this win, they would go... or. Uh, an, I guess first looking on the losing end of this matchup, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights were led in scoring by their starting guard Caleb McConnell in their final matchup. Their senior out of Jacksonville, Florida, will go on to finish with 23 points and 11 rebounds. He did all this in 48 minutes. He shot 10 for 12 from the field, 2 for 3 from 3, and he made his only free throw of the day. 
Um, and their starting forward, Ron Harper Jr., will go on to finish with uh, 22 points of his own as the senior out of New Jersey also added four rebounds and four assists. He did all this in 46 minutes. He shot nine for 14 from the field and four for seven from three. On the winning end of this matchup, the 11th ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish were led in scoring by their starting forward, Paul Atkinson Jr. Their senior out of West Palm Beach, Florida would finish with 26 six points and six rebounds as well as two blocks in 33 minutes he shot 13 for 15 from the field on the day with this win the 11 seed notre dame fighting irish will live to fight on um, their next matchup will see them face off against the six seed alabama crimson tide out of the sec um, and then Taking a look at where 11 seed Rutgers is following this loss, they will finish their season with an 18 and 14 record. Uh, this comes after they finished with the sixth best record in the Big Ten this year. Um, and now with this law, or and now with these um, matchups ending up like this, uh, that is what college basketball is looking like as we are preparing for what's going on today. Today will be the very first day of the round of 64 as everything's going to really get started today taking a look now at what is the very first match of the day at 12 15 on cbs uh the 6c colorado state um rams and will face off against the 11 seed michigan wolverines in the south region uh the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between three seed Tennessee and four seed Longwood at 1240 on true TV um, in the Midwest region. The four seed Providence Friars are going to face off against the 13 seed South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Uh, the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between five seed Iowa and 12 seed Richmond at 145 on TNT in the West region. The eight seed Boise State Broncos are going to face off against the nine seed Mem or Memphis uh, Tigers in the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon. The winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between one seed Gonzaga and 16 seed Georgia State. At 2 o'clock on TBS in Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas, in the East Division or the East Region, the one seed Baylor Bears out of the Big Ten or the Big 12 and the defending champs are going to face off against the 16 seed Norfolk State Spartans um, as this is going to be yet another matchup as this will be on TBS. The winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between eight seed North Carolina and nine seed Marquette. At 245 on CBS in Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis in the South region, the three seed Tennessee Volunteers are going to face off against the 14 seed Longwood Lancers. The winner of this matchup will, of course, face off against the winner between six seed Colorado State and 11 seed Michigan. Those are going to be the two matchups taking place in Indianapolis. Taking a look at what's happening at 310 on True TV in Key Bake Center in Buffalo, New York, in the Midwest region. The five seed Iowa Hawkeyes are going to face off against the 12 seed Richmond Spiders. Um, looking at the Midwest region, the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between four seed Providence and 13 seed South Dakota State. That will be the second game in Buffalo. At 4.15 on TNT in the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon, in the West region, the one seed Gonzaga Bulldogs, who ended up winning the West coast conference this year are going to face off against the 16 seed georgia state panthers um as of course this will be a 116 matchup that i don't imagine will be in the way of the upset but still the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between um not eight seed boise state and the winner or, or in nine seed um memphis uh taking a look at the next game in this match or Today at 4.30 on TBS in Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. In the East region, the 8-seed North Carolina Tar Heels are going to face off against the 9-seed Marquette Golden Eagles. The winner of this match will face off against the winner between 1-seed and one seed Baylor, the defending champs, and 16 seed Norfolk State, as those are the that there's nor, as Marquette and North Carolina will be the second game in Fort Worth, Texas. At 650 in TNT in Key Bank Center in Buffalo, in the West region, the fifth seed Yukon Huskies are gonna face off against the 12th seed New Mexico State 
Aggies um, on TNT. Um, the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner beats or looking at how this matchup is going to fare. The winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between fourth seed Arkansas and 13 seed Vermont. Um, that's going to be yet another game in Buffalo. That'll be the third game in Buffalo. Taking a look at seven o'clock, seven ten on CBS in Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis in the East Region. The two seed Kentucky Wildcats are going to face off against the fifteen seed Saint Peter's Peacocks. Um, I don't know if I said before, but this game will be on CBS. The winner of this match will face off against the winner between seven seed Murray State and ten seed San Francisco at seven twenty on TBS in the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon. In the East region, the fifth seed St. Mary's Giles will face off against the 12 seed Indiana Hoosiers, who entered this matchup after beating 12 seed Wyoming in the first round. Uh, the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between four seed UCLA and 13 seed Akron. At 727 on True TV in Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. In the Midwest region, the eight seed San, and San Diego State Aztecs will face off against the nine seed Creighton Blue Jays. Um, looking at the Midwest region, the winner of this match will face off against the winner between one seed Kansas and 16 seed Texas Southern. At 9.20 on TNT, in the Key Bank Center in Buffalo, New York, in the West region, the four-seed Arizona Razorbacks are going to face off against the 13-seed Vermont Catamounts. And then, of course, looking in the West region, the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between five-seed UConn and 12-seed um, New Mexico State. Looking at 940 on CBS in Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, the or in the East region, the seven seed Murray State Racers are going to face off against the 10 seed San Francisco Dons. And looking in the East region, the winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between two seed Kentucky and 15 seed St. Peter's. At 9.50 on TBS in the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon, looking at the last game there, um, at four, the, in the East region, the four-seed UCLA Bruins are going to face off against the 13-seed Akron Zips, um, and this will be on TBS, so I did mention it earlier. The winner of this matchup will face off against the winner between five-seed St. Mary's and 12-seed Indiana. Last but not least, at 9.57 on True TV in Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas, one seed Kansas in the Midwest region is going to face off against 16 seed Texas Southern as the Jayhawks will take off, will face off against the uh, Texas Southern Tigers after Texas Southern beat Texas A&M Corpus Christi the other day. Those are going to be the 16 matchups that are going to be played today. By the end of today, there will be 48 teams left and by the end of Today, or I guess by the, by by the end of tomorrow, there will be um, thirty two teams ready for the next round of the tournament. Taking a look at what's going on in the women's bracket, the looking at the first matchups of the round of the first four, starting off in the Greensboro region with the with this sixteen seed matchup, um, Howard from the uh, Mid Eastern Athletic Conference, the champs would end up beating. Um, the incarnate word Cardinals from the Southland Conference. The 16 seed Howard Bison would win by four after they outscored the incarnate word Cardinals by seven in the fourth quarter. On the losing end of this matchup, the 16 seed incarnate word Cardinals from the Southland Conference will, will finish their 2021-22 season. Um, on the losing end of this matchup, being led in scoring by their forward off the bench, Tiana Gardner. Their junior out of Austin, Texas, will go on to finish with 16 points and 6 rebounds, as well as 5 turnovers in 26 minutes. She shot 5 for 10 from the field and a perfect 6 for 6 from the foul line. And on the winning end of this matchup, the 16 seed Howard Bison out of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference would be led in scoring by their starting forward, Brooklyn Ford Davis. Their junior out of Chicago would finish with 15 points, 11 rebounds as well in 37 minutes. She shot 6 for 17 from the field. With this win, the 16 seed Howard Bison will advance into the second round as their match will be against the South Carolina Gamecocks. And then taking a look at the second matchup from yesterday, um, it would be between the 11 seeds within the same Greensboro region. It would be between as the Dayton Flyers would face off against 
um, the DePaul Blue Demons. Dayton would end up beating DePaul 88 to 57. De Dayton would win this matchup by 31 after outscoring DePaul by 15 in the second quarter after they would go on to be up by 23 at halftime. And they would also outscore DePaul by 10 in the second half. On the losing end of this matchup, the 11 seed DePaul Blue Demons out of the Big East will finish their season being led in scoring by their starting forward, um, Anissa Morrow. Their freshman out of Chicago would finish with uh, 28 points, 17 rebounds, two steals, and four blocks in 37 minutes. She shot nine for 25 from the field and nine for 14 from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the 11 seed Dayton Flyers would be led in scoring by their starting guard, Aaron Whalen. Their starting senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, will go on to finish with 28 points in 33 minutes. She shot 10 for 17 from the field, 7 for 12 from 3, and she made her only free throw of the day. Off the bench, Dayton's guard, Jenna Giacone, their senior out of Del Mar, will go on to finish with 21 points of her own, as well as five blocks in 26 minutes. She would go on to shoot six for 13 from the field, four for six from three, and a perfect five for five from the foul line. With this win, the 11 seed Dayton Flyers, the champions of the athletic Atlantic 10 conference this year would go on to are going on to the next round of this matchup with a 26 and 5 record. Their next match will be against the six seed Georgia Bulldogs. Um, so that's how they are going to advance to the next round. And with this loss, the 11 seed DePaul Blue Demons will finish their 2021 22 season with a 22 and 11 record. Um, following these two matchups, there are now 66 teams left in the tournament as the next two matchups for the first four will be today um, taking a look at seven o'clock on ESPN2 in Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh North Carolina the 16 seed Longwood Lancers are going to face off against the 16 seed Mount St. Mary's Mountaineers um, this will be in the Bridgeport region and looking at the Bridgeport region with this win they will face off against one seed North Carolina State and then looking at the 11 seed matchup in the Spokane reason region, the 11 seed uh, match will be uh, in the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge as the 11 seed Missouri State Lady Bears will face off against the 11 seed Florida State Seminoles. And looking at this particular bracket, the winner of this matchup will face off against six seed Ohio State on the 19th in a couple of days. So that's what the women's bracket is looking like. By the end of today, there will be 64 teams as opposed to the 48 uh, teams on the men's side. So with that said, um, that's what college basketball is looking like today. Taking a look at what professional basketball is looking like in the NBA, starting off in Charlotte, the Hornets hosted the Atlanta Hawks. The Charlotte Hornets would end up beating the Atlanta Hawks 116 to 106 um, in a game where of course the Hawks and the Hornets are fighting for playoff positioning the Hornets would win this game by 10 after outscoring the Hawks by 15 in the second half by 10 in the fourth quarter to break their tie going into the fourth on the losing end of this matchup the Atlanta Hawks were led in scoring by their starting small forward out of Virginia DeAndre Hunter he finished with 21 points in 37 minutes he shot seven for 13 from the field four for seven from three and three for four from the foul line. Um, their starting center, Clint Capella, finished with 17 points and 15 rebounds in 31 minutes. He would go on to shoot seven for 14 from the field and a perfect three for three from the foul line. The Hawks elite starting point guard, Trey Young, finished with nine points, three rebounds, 15 assists, three steals and six turnovers in 38 minutes. Trey shot three for 12 from the field and a perfect three for three from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Charlotte Hornets were led in scoring by their elite starting point guard LaMelo Ball. He finished with 22 points, 8 rebounds, and 11 assists in 36 minutes. He shot 7 for 16 from the field, 5 for 10 from 3, and a perfect 3 for 3 from the foul line. Their center off the bench, Montrez Harrell, finished with 20 points and 6 rebounds in 20 minutes. He shot 7 for 9 from the field and 6 for 7 from the foul line. Um, and then the 
Hornets starting center Mason Plumley would finish with 12 points and 10 rebounds in 22 minutes. He shot five for seven from the field and two for three from the foul line. With this win, the Charlotte Hornets are now 35 and 35. That is the ninth best record in the Eastern Conference. They've now won their last three games. That is the second longest active winning streak in the Eastern Conference. They've won six of their last 10 games. In the Eastern Conference play and picture, they are sitting a game behind the eight seed the eighth yeah the eighth seed um Brooklyn Nets at the moment they sit half a game ahead of the Atlanta Hawks who hold the 10th best record in the conference the Charlotte Hornets are sitting in into a whole 11 games behind the Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat with this loss the Atlanta Hawks are now 34 and 35 that is the 10th best record in the Eastern Conference they've now only lost four of their last 10 games sitting at the bottom of the play in picture they sit half a game behind the ninth place Charlotte Hornets out east they sit four and a half games ahead of the 11 place Washington Wizards the first team on the outside looking in the Atlanta Hawks trail the Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat by 11 and a half games at the moment Jumping out to Cleveland, the Cavaliers hosted the Philadelphia 76ers. The 76ers would beat the Cavaliers 118 to 114. The Sixers won this matchup by four after outscoring the Cavaliers by nine in the fourth quarter. Not to mention they would go on to outscore the Cavs by 13 in the first half. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Cavaliers were led in scoring by their all-star starting point guard Darius Garland. He would go on to finish with 22 points, five rebounds, and seven assists in 38 minutes. He shot five for 15 from the field, one for four from three, and 11 for 12 from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the Philadelphia 76ers were led in scoring by their elite starting center, Joel Embiid. He finished with 35 points, 17 rebounds, and five assists in 35 minutes. Joel Embiid, whose actual... Uh, let me get this correct, whose 28th birthday was yesterday, he would go on to uh, shoot through 13 for 19 from the field, one for three from three, and eight for 10 from the foul line, and he got the win, so that was a good birthday for him. Um, he would go on to have a good day for himself. Their starting point guard, Tyrese Maxey, finished with 25 points in 38 minutes. He shot nine for 15 from the field, three for six from three, and a perfect four for four from the foul line. Their elite starting shooting guard, James Harden, finished with 21 points, two rebounds, 11 assists, and two steals in 42 minutes. He shot five for 12 from the field, one for six from three, and 10 for 12 from the foul line. With this win, the Philadelphia 76ers are 42 and 26. That is the third best record in the Eastern Conference. They've now won seven of their last 10 games. <clears throat> they now sit a game behind the second seed, the second place Milwaukee Bucks, the defending champs uh, within the Eastern Conference playoff picture. They also sit a game ahead of the fourth place Boston Celtics. They trail the Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat by three whole games in the conference as they are hold as the Sixers have 14 more games left in their schedule. With this loss, the Cleveland Cavaliers are 39 and 30. That is the sixth best record in the East. They've now lost six of their last 10 games um, as they are tied with the Raptors for the sixth best record. Um, in the Eastern Conference playoff picture, they are sitting two games behind the fifth place Chicago Bulls, and they are sitting three and a half games ahead of the eighth place Brooklyn Nets. The the Cavaliers are now trailing the Miami Heat by six and a half games in the East. Jumping out to our nation's capital in Washington, D.C., the Washington Wizards hosted the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets would beat the Wizards 125 to 109, and the Nuggets would win this game by 18. They won this game by 18 after outscoring the Wizards by 15 in the second quarter. They were up by 21 at the half. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Washington Wizards were led in scoring by their small forward off the bench out of Israel, Denny Abdija. He would go on to finish with the 19. 19 points and seven rebounds in 28 minutes. He would go on to shoot seven for 10 from the field and five for six from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the Denver Nuggets were led in scoring by their elite starting center, 
last year's um, NBA MVP, Nikola Jokic, would finish with 29 points, 13 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals in 26 minutes. He shot 10 for 14 from the field. He shot 2 for 4, or he shot a perfect 2 for 2 from 3 and a perfect 7 for 7 from the foul line. With this win, the Denver Nuggets are now 42 and 28. That is the sixth best record in the Western Conference. They've won their last two games and they've won seven of their last 10. In the Western Conference playoff picture, they sit a game and a half behind the Utah Jazz and the Dallas Mavericks, who are tied for the fourth best record in the conference. They are sitting a game and a half ahead of the seventh place Minnesota Timberwolves. Overall, they are trailing the Western Conference leading and NBA leading Phoenix Suns by 14 whole games at the moment. With this loss, the Washington Wizards are now 29 and 39. That is currently the fifth worst record in the Eastern Conference as they are the first team outside of the play in picture. The Wizards have now lost their last five games. Their five game losing streak is the longest active losing streak in the Eastern Conference. Only the Oklahoma City Thunder have a longer losing streak in the NBA. The Wizards have lost eight of their last 10 games. They sit four and a half games behind the 10th place Atlanta Hawks as the Wizards have 12 more games left in their schedule. So that's what that looks like. Jumping out to Brooklyn, the Nets hosted the Dallas Mavericks and the Mavericks would end up beating the Nets 113 to 111. They would go on to win this game by two after they would end up outscoring the Nets by 14 in the fourth quarter to overcome their 12 point deficit on the losing end of this matchup the hometown brooklyn nets were led in scoring by their goaded starting power forward kevin durant out of texas the two-time nba finals mvp finished with 23 points six rebounds and 10 assists in 40 minutes he shot eight for 20 from the field two for five from three and a perfect five for five from the foul line their starting point guard goran dragic finished with 21 points he would go he would do all this in 36 minutes he shot nine for 16 from the field he would go on to shoot um a perfect two for two from the foul line as well and then of course their starting center andre drummond finished with 14 points and 17 rebounds in 22 minutes he would go on to shoot seven for eight from the field on the winning end of this matchup the dallas mavericks were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard out of slovenia luka Doncic. he would finish with 37 points nine rebounds nine assists and two steals in 39 minutes he shot 14 for 26 from the field 5 for 12 from 3, and a perfect 4 for 4 from the foul line. The Mavericks starting guard, star Spencer Dinwiddie, finished with 22 points and 3 steals in 33 minutes. He shot 6 for 14 from the field. He would also go on to shoot a perfect 8 for 8 from the foul line. With this win, the Dallas Mavericks are now 43 and 26. They are tied with the Utah Jazz for the fourth best record in the West. They've now won their last three games. They've won eight of their last 10. Um, they're three-game winning streak is tied with the Timberwolves and the Suns for the second longest active winning streak in the conference. Only the Grizzlies have a longer one. In the playoff picture, sitting alongside the Jazz, they are sitting three and a half games behind the third place Golden State Warriors. They are sitting a game and a half ahead of the sixth place Denver Nuggets. And with this loss, the Brooklyn Nets are 36 and 34. That is the eighth best record in the Eastern Conference. They have now lost five of their last 10 games in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. They sit three and a half games behind the seventh place Toronto Raptors. They sit a game ahead of the ninth place Charlotte Hornets. They trail the Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat by 10 whole games. So that's what Brooklyn's looking like. And then jumping to another borough, the New York Knicks would host the Portland Trailblazers. The Knicks would win this game 128 to 98. They won this game by 30. They would outscore the Trailblazers by 11 in the first half. They would outscore the Blazers by nine in the third quarter and then by 10 in the fourth to outscore them by 19 in the second half. On the losing end of this match of the Portland Trailblazers were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard out of Villanova, Josh Hart. He finished with 17 points and five rebounds in 28 minutes. He shot six for 15 from the field and three for four from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown New York Knicks were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard out of Duke, RJ Barrett. He would go on to finish with 31 points 
and four rebounds, five assists, and two steals as well in 40 minutes. R.J. Barrett shot 10 for 20 from the field, five for 11 from three, and he shot six for seven from the foul line. Their starting power forward, Julius Randle, finished with 20 points, nine rebounds, and seven assists in 34 minutes. He shot five for 18 from the field and 10 for 12 from the foul line. With this win, the New York Knicks are now 29 and 40. That is the fourth worst record in the Eastern Conference. They've won four of their last 10. They sit five games behind the 10th place Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference. With this loss, the Portland Trailblazers are 26 and 42. That is the fourth worst record in the Western Conference. They've lost their last two games. They've lost eight of their last 10. They are currently sitting a game and a half behind the 10th place New Orleans Pelicans out West. So that is what that com- so that's what um they're looking like. Jumping to Houston, Texas, the Houston, Texas, the Houston Rockets would host the Phoenix Suns as the West best would face the West worst uh, team into record wise. The Suns would beat the Rockets 129 to 112 as they've won 80% of their games this season. Um, the Suns would win this game by 17 after they outscored the Rockets by 12 in the third quarter. They outscored the Rockets by 16 in the second half. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Houston Rockets were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard, last year's number two overall pick, Jalen Green. He finished with 22 points in 36 minutes. He shot 9 for 15 from the field and 4 for 6 from 3. Their starting shooting guard out of USC, Kevin Porter Jr., finished with 21 points, 8 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. He did all of this in 36 minutes. He shot 7 for 15 from the field, 5 for 10 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the Phoenix Suns were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard, Devin Booker. He finished with 30 36 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists in 36 minutes. He shot 15 for 24 from the field, 5 for 12 from 3, and he would go on to make his only free throw attempt from the line. Their starting small forward, Mikhail Bridges, finished with 26 points, 5 assists, and 3 steals in 44 minutes. He shot 10 for 17 from the field, 3 for 6 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the foul line. Their starting center, DeAndre Ayton, out of Arizona, finished with 23 points and 11 rebounds in 31 minutes. He shot 10 for 19 from the field and 3 for 4 from the foul line. Their starting small forward, Torrey Craig, finished with 21 points and 4 rebounds as well as 2 blocks in 34 minutes. He shot a perfect 8 for 8 from the field, a perfect 3 for 3 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the foul line. He made all 10 of his shots on the day. With this win, the Phoenix Suns are now 56 and 14. That is currently the league's best record. They are the only team that has clinched a playoff spot so far. They've now won their last three games. They've won seven of their last 10. They sit eight games ahead of the second place Memphis Grizzlies. Um, They are currently sitting 14 games ahead of the sixth place Nuggets with 12 games left in their schedule, which is why they've already clinched a playoff spot. And not to mention, they are also sitting 27 and a half games ahead of the 10th place New Orleans Pelicans at the moment to get a sense of how big the gap is between the best and worst teams at the top and bottom of the playoff structure. With this loss, the Houston Rockets are now 15 and or they're now 17 and 52. That is the worst record in the Western Conference and win percentage wise, that is the worst record in the NBA. They've now lost their last three games. Um, their three game losing streak is tied with the Los Angeles Lakers for the longest active losing streak in the West. The Oklahoma City Thunder are the only team to have more. And the Houston Rockets are currently sitting 11 games behind the New Orleans Pelicans. So right now that is where they are sitting. Um, jumping on or jumping to Minneapolis, the Minnesota Timberwolves hosted the Los Angeles Lakers. The Wolves would end up beating the Lakers by 20. They would end up winning this matchup 124 to 104 after they outscored the Lakers by 14 in the first half. They would end up leading the Lakers by 21 at halftime, not to mention they outscored the Lakers by 11 in the fourth quarter as well. On the losing end of this matchup, the Los Angeles Lakers were led in scoring by their goaded starting small forward, LeBron James. He finished with 19 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 blocks, and 5 turnovers in 37 minutes. He shot 8 for 21 from the field, 1 for 8 from 3, and 2 for 5 from the foul line.
Um, their goaded starting point guard, the NBA's all-time leader in triple doubles, Russell Westbrook, finished with 15 points, four rebounds, five assists, and two steals in 36 minutes. He shot five for 12 from the field, one for four from three, and four for six from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the Minnesota Timberwolves will be led in scoring by their elite starting center, Carl Anthony Towns. He finished with 30 points and eight rebounds, as well as six turnovers in 26 minutes. He shot eight for 15 from the field, one for three from three, and a perfect 13 for 13 from the foul line. Their elite starting small forward, Anthony Edwards, finished with 27 points, six rebounds, four assists, and two steals in 32 minutes. He shot eight for 21 from the field, six for 11 from three, and five for six from the foul line with this win the minnesota timberwolves are now 41 and 30 as they have officially clinched a non-losing record for the year they've won their last three games and they've won nine of their last 10 they are tied with the mavericks and the suns for the second longest active winning streak in the west only the grizzlies have a longer winning streak um, the Timberwolves in the Western Conference playoff picture are sitting a game and a half behind the sixth place Denver Nuggets. Uh, they are sitting five and a half games ahead of the eighth place Los Angeles Clippers at the moment. They are trailing the Western Conference leading Phoenix Suns by 15 and a half games at the moment. With this loss, the Los Angeles Lakers are now 29 and 40. They have now lost their last three games, tied with the Rockets for the second longest active losing streak in the West behind the Thunder. The Lakers have now lost eight of their last 10 games. In the Western Conference play in picture, they are sitting five and a half games behind the eighth place Los Angeles Clippers. They are sitting a game ahead of the 10th place New Orleans Pelicans for the time being. They are trailing the first place Phoenix Suns by 26 and a half games at the moment as the Lakers have only won 29 games all year. Taking a look at what's going on in San Antonio, the Spurs hosted the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Spurs would win this match of 122 to 120. They would win this match of by two after outscoring the Thunder by 12 in the first half. On the losing end of this matchup, the Thunder would be led in scoring by their starting point guard, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He finished with 34 points six rebounds, eight assists, and three steals in 35 minutes. He shot 14 for 22 from the field, one for four from three, and five for eight from the foul line. Their starting power forward, Darius Baisley, finished with 25 points and nine rebounds in 33 minutes. He shot nine for 16 from the field, four for 10 from three, and three for four from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown San Antonio Spurs were led in scoring by their all-star starting point guard, DeJounte Murray. Murray finished with 26 points, 9 rebounds, 12 assists, and 4 steals in 36 minutes. He shot 7 for 18 from the field, 4 for 8 from 3, and a perfect 8 for 8 from the foul line. Um, their starting small forward, Keldon Johnson, finished with 22 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals in 35 minutes. He shot 8 for 16 from the field. 5 for 10 from 3, and he made it one of his two free throw attempts on the night. Their shooting guard off the bench, Lonnie Walker the fourth, would finish with 20 points in 22 minutes. He shot 6 for 18 from the field, 4 for 10 from 3, and 4 for 6 from the foul line. With this win, the San Antonio Spurs are now 27 and 43. That is the fifth worst record in the Western Conference. They've only won three of their last 10 games. They are now sitting a game and a half behind the 10th place New Orleans Pelicans out west. And just to and, and looking at where the Thunder are with this loss, they are now 20 and 49. That is the second worst record in the Western Conference. That is the fourth worst record in the NBA. They've now lost their last seven games. That is the longest active losing streak in the NBA. They've lost eight of their last 10. They are currently sitting eight games behind the 10th place New Orleans Pelicans as the Thunder have 13 games left in their season. So they are but as so they are still technically eligible to possibly make a playoff spot taking a look now at what is going on in salt lake city the utah jazz hosted the chicago bulls the jazz would win this match of 125 to 110 they won by 15 after outscoring the chicago bulls by 10 points in the second half on the losing end of this matchup the chicago bulls were led in scoring by their all-star starting shooting guard out of ucla zach levine he finished with 33 points two rebounds five assists and three steals in 33 minutes he he shot 11 for 20 from the field, 5 for 10 from 3, and 6 for 8 from the foul line. Their all-star starting small 
forward out of USC, DeMar DeRozan, finished with 25 points, five rebounds, and seven assists in 35 minutes. He shot 10 for 20 from the field and a perfect two for two from three. He would go on to shoot three for four from the foul line. Their starting center, Nikola Vucevic, finished with 10 points and 11 rebounds in 29 minutes. He shot five for 14 from the field. On the winning end of this matchup, the hometown Utah Jazz were led in scoring by their elite starting shooting guard, Donovan Mitchell. He finished with 37 points, three rebounds, and five assists in 29 minutes. He shot 12 for 22 from the field, 9 for 15 from 3, and a perfect 4 for 4 from the foul line. Their point guard off the bench, Jordan Clarkson, finished with 26 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 steals in 35 minutes. He shot 11 for 18 from the field, 1 for 5 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the foul line. Um, Their elite starting center, Rudy Gobert, finished with 14 points, 20 rebounds, and 4 blocks in 33 minutes. He shot 5 for 8 from the field and 4 for 6 from the foul line. With this win, the Utah Jazz are now 43-26. and 26. That is the fourth best record in the Western Conference. They've won six of their last ten games. In the Western Conference playoff picture, they are sitting tied with the Dallas Mavericks for that fourth best record. They sit three and a half games behind the third place Golden State Warriors. They sit a game and a half ahead of the sixth place Denver Nuggets. They are sitting 12 and a half games behind the Western Conference leading Phoenix Suns at the moment. With this loss, the Chicago Bulls are 41 and 28. That is the fifth best record in the Eastern Conference as they've lost their last two games. They've lost seven of their last 10. The Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference playoff picture are sitting half a game behind the fourth place Boston Celtics. They are sitting two games ahead of the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Toronto Raptors, who are tied for the sixth best record in the East. The Bulls are currently trailing the Miami Heat by four and a half games at the moment in, in, in the conference. Jumping up to San Francisco out west, the Golden State Warriors hosted the Boston Celtics. The Celtics would beat the Warriors 110 to 88. They would win this matchup by 22. After they outscored the Warriors by 16 in the first half, they would outscore the Warriors by 12 in the fourth quarter as well. Well, on the losing end of this matchup, the hometown Golden State Warriors were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard, Jordan Poole. He finished with 29 points and two steals in 34 minutes. He shot 10 for 20 from the field, 6 for 13 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the foul line. Their elite starting shooting guard and three-time NBA champ, Clay Thompson, would finish with 18 points and three rebounds in 33 minutes. He shot 8 for 24 from the field. He would go 1 for 11 from 3 and 1 for 2 from the foul line. Their goaded starting shoot point guard, Stephen Curry, would only play 14 minutes. He would finish with three points and two assists in those 14 minutes. He shot one for four from the field as all of his attempts came from three. He would go on to injure his foot. That's why he left the game. And then off the bench, their um, all-star power forward, Draymond Green, would finish with two points, eight rebounds, three assists, and two steals in those 22 minutes as all as both of his points came from the free throw line he was two for two from the foul line on the winning end of this matchup the boston celtics were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard jalen brown he finished with 26 points in in seven rebounds in 35 minutes he shot nine for 21 from the field and he would shoot six for seven from the foul line the boston celtics elite starting small forward jason tatum would also have 26 points on the day as he had 12 rebounds and four assists in 37 minutes he shot six for 16 from the field, three for eight from three. So that means he shot three for eight inside and outside of, of the three-point line. He also shot 11 for 12 from the foul line. The Celtics starting point guard, Marcus Smart, out of Oklahoma State, would finish with 20 points and eight assists in 34 minutes. He would go on to shoot eight for 12 from the field and four for seven from three. With this win, the Boston Celtics are now 42 and 28. That is the fourth best record in the Eastern Conference. They've now won eight of their last 10 games. As in the playoff picture, they are sitting a game behind the third place Philadelphia 76ers. And they're also sitting half a game ahead of the fifth place Chicago Bulls. They are trailing the first seed or the Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat by four games at the moment. With this loss, the Golden State Warriors are 47 and 23. That is the second best record in the Western Conference at the moment. And that is currently the third best record in the NBA. The Warriors have lost six of their last 10 games. In the Western Conference playoff picture, they are sitting a game behind the second seed Memphis Grizzlies. They are sitting three and a half games ahead of the Utah Jazz and the Dallas Mavericks, who are tied for fourth place in the West. 
and they are trailing the Western Conference leading Phoenix Suns now by nine whole games in the conference. Taking a look now at what's going on about an hour or two away, the Sacramento Kings would host the Milwaukee Bucks. The defending champs would end up beating the Kings 135-126. to They would win this game by 9 after they outscored the Kings by 10 in the second quarter. On the losing end of this matchup, the Kings were led in scoring by their starting power forward, uh, DeMontis Sabonis. He finished with 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 7 assists in 39 minutes. He shot 6 for 13 from the field and 10 for 13 from the foul line. The uh, Sacramento Kings starting point guard De'Aaron Fox finished with 21 points, 7 assists, 2 steals, and 9 turnovers in 37 minutes. He shot 8 for 23 from the field and a perfect 2 for 2 from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the defending champs Milwaukee Bucks were led in scoring by their elite starting power forward and the NBA's reigning NBA Finals MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He will go on to finish with 36 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals in 35 minutes. He shot 10 for 23 from the field and 12 for 16 from the foul line. The Bucks all-star small forward Chris Middleton finished with 32 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals in 34 minutes. He shot 10 for 20 from the field, 7 for 10 from 3, and a perfect 5 for 5 from the foul line. Their starting point guard Drew Holiday finished with 21 points and 4 steals in 35 minutes. He shot 8 for 16 from the field. 3 for 6 from 3 and 2 for 4 from the foul line. With this win, the Milwaukee Bucks are now 44 and 26. That is the second best record in the Eastern Conference. They've now won their last two games and they've won eight of their last 10. They are now currently sitting two games behind the Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat. And they are now sitting a game ahead of the third place Philadelphia 76ers in the conference to get a sense of where they are. Um, and with this loss, the Sacramento Kings are 25 and 46. That is the third worst record in the Western Conference. They've now lost seven of their last 10. They are now sitting four games behind the 10th place New Orleans Pelicans out West, um, just to get a sense of how far they are outside of the playoff picture, as the Kings are now in their final 11 games of the season. Last but not least, jumping back to Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Clippers hosted the Toronto Raptors in the Crypto.com Arena. The Toronto Raptors would beat the Clippers 103-100. to They won this game by three after outscoring the Clippers by 10 in the first half, by eight in the second quarter. On the losing end of this matchup, the hometown LA Clippers were led in scoring by their starting point guard, Reggie Jackson. He finished with 23 points and nine assists in 34 minutes. He shot eight for 19 from the field, four for eight from three, and three for five from the foul line. Their starting small forward, Marcus Morris Sr., finished with 22 points, six rebounds, and seven assists in 35 minutes. He shot nine for 17 from the field and a perfect two for two from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the Toronto Raptors were led in scoring by their starting power forward, Pascal Siakam. He will go on to finish with 31 points, 12 rebounds, and 3 assists in 39 minutes. He shot 13 for 22 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the foul line. Their starting shooting guard, Fred Van Vliet, finished with 21 points in 36 minutes. He shot 7 for 17 from the field. He will go on to shoot 3 for 9 from 3 and 4 for 7 from the from 3 point from, from 3 as that was the Raptors um, lone all-star this season. With this win, the Toronto Raptors are now 39 and 30. They are tied with the Cleveland Cavaliers for the sixth best record in the East. With this win, the um, Toronto Raptors have now won their last five basketball games. That is the longest active winning streak in the Eastern Conference as well as is as well as the longest active winning streak in the NBA. Um, they have won seven of their last 10 games in the Eastern Conference playoff picture, sitting alongside the Cavaliers. They sit two games behind the uh, fifth place Chicago Bulls. They sit three and a half games ahead of the eighth place Brooklyn Nets. They trail the first place in Eastern Conference leading Miami Heat by six and a half games in the conference. With this loss, the Los Angeles Clippers are now 36 and 36. Um, that is the eighth best record in the. Uh, that is now the eighth best record in the Western Conference. They've now lost their last two games. They've lost five of their last ten games. Um, in the Western Conference playoff picture, they are sitting five and a half games behind the seventh place Minnesota Timberwolves. They are sitting five and a half games ahead of the ninth place Los Angeles Lakers. As it looks as though the Clippers are going to finish comfortably with that uh, eighth spot as they have 
10 games left in their schedule. Um, but that is what the NBA is looking like following yesterday's matchups. Uh, taking a look at what the NBA is going to be looking like today. Because today is Thursday, of course, the primetime matchup will be on NBA TV. The only matchup today will feature the two teams in the NBA that have failed to qualify for playoff contention. As the... Um, Orlando Magic are going to host the Detroit Pistons. The Magic hold the worst record and the Pistons hold the second worst just by one less loss. The Magic enter this loss with a two-game losing streak. The Pistons enter this lo- enter this matchup with a four-game losing streak. This will be an Amway Center, so this will be the um, game to watch. Taking a look at what's going on with soccer overseas, uh, first outside of Champions League, uh, or I guess starting first with Champions League, the round of 16 is officially over as the eight teams that needed to advance to the quarterfinals um, have already done so. Looking at the first leg, or I guess coming into this first leg, the six teams that had already made it going in, at least you had Germany from, or you had Bayern Munich representing Germany. You had... um, Port, or you had Benfica representing Portugal. You have Manchester City and you have Liverpool representing England. And then you have Real Madrid at the moment rep- and Atletico Madrid representing Spain. First, jumping to Italy, Juventus, the last remaining Italian team would host Villarreal. Villarreal would end up beating Juventus 3 to nothing after they came into this matchup with a 1 to 1 aggregate. Their first goal would be a penalty kick in the 78th minute from Gerard Moreno after Matisse Delict, the defender for Juventus would pick up the penalty. Their second goal will come in the 85th minute from Pau Torres and their third goal will come in the 92nd minute from Arnal Don um, as Villarreal would use this 4 to 1 aggregate to advance to the quarterfinal rounds and then they would be the third team to represent Spain alongside Atletico and Real Madrid and then jumping to the last team in France the reigning Ligue 1 champs Lila hosted Chelsea the reigning Champions League winners Chelsea would end up beating Lila 2 to 1 um, as Lila would score the first goal of this matchup coming in Chelsea did hold a 2 to 1 a- 2 to nothing aggregate lead so with Lila's only goal of the aggregate they- Chelsea was up 2 to 1 still their first goal would come in the would come at the end of the first half from their American forward Christian Pulisic, who scored in the first leg of this matchup as well. And then their second goal will come from their captain off of his knee, Cesar Aspilacueta. Um, and with this win, Chelsea will be the third team alongside Liverpool and Man City to advance to the quarterfinal of Champions League. The draw will, of course, be tomorrow. And once the quarterfinal matchup is set, I will do a preview for the round. And then, of course, taking a look at what's going on in the domestic leagues because there were domestic matchups going on. The second best team in the Premier League, Liverpool, will go to London to face off against Arsenal, one of the hotter teams in England. Liverpool would end up beating Arsenal 2 to nothing as their goals came in the second half. Their first goal came in the 54th minute from Diogo Jota um, from Portugal, and their 62nd minute goal came from Roberto Firmino, their striker from Brazil. With this win, Liverpool now holds the second best record in the Premier League. They only sit one point behind Manchester City after Manchester City was up by more than double digits at certain points uh, in this season. Liverpool is very much in this title race as Liverpool sits 10 points ahead of second place Chelsea with as Chelsea's played one less game than Liverpool. And with this loss, Arsenal is now holding the fourth best record in the Premier League still. They sit eight games behind third place Chelsea with one less game played than Chelsea. And then looking at what happened with Brighton and have Albion, uh, the 13th best team in England would host Tottenham Hotspur, who came or, or went with this matchup. I'm sorry. Tottenham would end up beating Brighton and Hove two to nothing. Their first goal came from Christian Romero in the 37th minute, and their second goal came um, from their elite English striker Harry Kane in the 57th. With this win, Tottenham is now holding the seventh best record in England as they are tied with West Ham, but West Ham holds the edge in goal differential. Tottenham now sits two points below fifth place Manchester United as Tottenham has only played one less game than Man U. So they get that opportunity. So they they do have that one game in hand, but that does put pressure on Tottenham to win their next game.
Taking a look at what's going on in the German Bundesliga, the second best team, Borussia Dortmund, would end up beating Mainz one to nothing thanks to an 87th minute goal from their Belgian defender Axel Wissel. With this win, uh, Borussia Dortmund is holding the second best record in the Bundesliga right now. They are sitting four points below first place Bayern as this race was getting a lot closer than Bayern had anticipated it to be. As both teams have, I believe, eight games left in their schedule. That's everything going from yesterday into today. Looking at what's going on today, um, today is mostly a matchup or mostly a day where you're going to see um, Europa League matchups as we see second legs. First, uh, AS Monaco is going to host Braga as Braga holds a 2 0 aggregate lead. Bayer Leverkusen is going to host Atalanta as Atalanta holds a 3 2 aggregate lead over Bayer Leverkusen. Galatasaray is going to host Barcelona after neither team scored in the first leg. Red Star Belgrade is going to host Rangers after Rangers holds a 3 0 aggregate lead. Eintracht Frankfurt is hosting Real Batiste after right now as Frankfurt holds a 2 1 aggregate lead. Lyon or Olympic Lyonnais is going to host FC Porto as Lyon holds a one to nothing aggregate lead. West Ham is going to host Sevilla as Sevilla holds the one to nothing aggregate lead. And then that those are going to be the matches that, of course, RB Leipzig has advanced past Spartak Moscow because of obvious reasons. And right now, that is what um, the world of sports has to offer for us today for Thursday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, 2022. Um, when all of today's exhibitions and matchups are done, I'm going to come back tomorrow for Friday, March 18th, and I can't wait to get started. Um, but of course, until then, I want to thank the ESPN, NCAA, uh, the NBA, and FIFA websites for giving me all the facts and figures that I need for this episode. And I do want to thank everyone for listening to all 54, 55 minutes. And I do apologize for the names that I did butcher, and I pop- definitely will butcher along the way. And... I do plan on eventually getting them right. With that said, thanks for listening to this piece. I do hope all is well, and I'll catch you with more tomorrow. I'm James Sims. This is The Elite, and I'll catch you with more tomorrow. Peace out.